kick it off. I'll start the recording and I'll share my screen. Cool. Welcome everyone. This is another fun session with our community community of deep learning adventures. Um, I'm joined by my great friends and colleagues, Robert and David, as well as friends and colleagues all around the country and around the world. Welcome again if you're joining us from YouTube. I uh, hope you're enjoying the sessions. If you're on a different time zone, um, that's why the recordings are there. Hopefully you can join us in person or over Zoom sometime. Um, this is your first time with us. Welcome, I wanna make sure you feel welcomed. And if you've been with us multiple times, again, you're in for a treat. Today, this is, we're gonna cover a session that I've unfortunately had to postpone multiple times and you'll see today why. Um, I thought it would be a much simpler uh, problem to tackle, but it's actually a little bit complicated. So I'm glad that we're able to we were able to make some progress and share what, what we had discovered with you, me and David. Um, if you're joining us from Meetup, again, you can find us under Deep Learning Adventures on Meetup. Um, we have some information here for you, or you can find us on Slack as well, as well as some other useful notebooks and things like that. All our sessions are recorded and posted on our YouTube page, and I'll post a link pretty soon here. As you can see, we've been pretty busy with uh, these Kaggle mini courses adventures where cover things like introduction to machine learning, SQL, Python, uh, computer vision, some, a, a new brand new course on feature engineering that Kaggle, the data science Kaggle team recently uh, released. It was a very good, interesting session. And um, today we'll cover the bonus lesson, bonus lesson on reinforcement learning. We won't be using any reinforcement learning today. We'll have to wait for that next next week, but uh, we'll see some simple strategies on, on how to do so. Cool. Um, let me post the links that I mentioned in the chat. Um, George, you probably have to increase your font a little yep, bit. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. So as I mentioned, this is the bonus lesson for the reinforcement learning. Uh, course, we covered um, the first four lessons, uh, Dimitri and Alexander did a great job covering them. Uh, me and David are gonna cover this bonus lesson on this Kaggle competition called Highlight Competition. And what this really is, is about a multiplayer game created by this company called Two Sigma, where uh, you have four participants and each participant um, is in charge of an agent that collects energy, energy source called Highlight. And at the end of the game, the player with the most highlight uh, wins. That's the high overview of, of this competition. There is a leaderboard here. Um, this is the actual competition page. I think it ended, it ended six months ago. It's very active, a lot of discussions. Um, uh, there's a leaderboard. You can replay uh, what are called um, games uh, to see how they, uh, they performed. Um, some specific rules and so forth. I'll just give you an overview of the games, of the game and some other rules. And, um, and then me and David will share with you our approach on how we tackle this, this challenge. So this is um, uh, this competition is available from the Kaggle environments uh, um, module and specifically it's called Hellite. You've seen other sessions like uh, Connect4 or other games. In this case, we're using the highlight uh, module and we'll have uh, four random players play against each other. And just to give you an idea of how the layout is and what it looks like. So we'll start with this, I think it's a 21 by 21 grid and each cell has what is called this energy source highlight. And the brighter it is, the more highlight it has. Each player has a highlight score, which is uh, the same for all of them, it's 5,000. Uh, you have multiple ships. In this case, I have one. You can have as many ship, ship yards as you want. In this case, I have zero. And each ship can contain on its cargo, I think, a limited number of uh, amount of halides. So a ship travels the universe, goes to a halide source, and if it sits on a cell, I think it will collect 25% of the halide of that cell in one round. So the game is played in rounds, and you, you'll see here multiple rounds over time. And there are four players. Something to notice so that the game is fair for everybody is the layout is symmetrical horizontally and vertically. So you see this mirror uh, of highlight so that you are not disproportionately you know, performing based on where you land. Um, so everybody basically has the same 
opportunity to access highlight. So I'm just going to play it for a few uh, rounds for us just to get an idea of what it looks like. So the first thing that the ship does is it converts itself to a shipyard, and then a shipyard can spawn a ship based on different rules that you that you select. Um, the color is what distinguishes the players, and you can see, for example, that the yellow one has one ship, but two shipyards, and it's looking for energy source. Um, the red one has three shipyards and two ships. The purple one has four shipyards and three ships, and the green one has two shipyards, one here and one here, one ship. So I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. As you can see, the highlight uh, quantity increases over time, so it becomes brighter and brighter. And towards the end of the game, um, the, the, the game is evaluated based on how much highlight you have deposited on your shipyard, not how much you have in your cargo. So for example, the green player has more highlight on its cargo than on the shipyard, but they will be here or she will be evaluated based on how much highlight they have on the shipyard. Those are the very basic rules of the game. Um, there are some extra rules that make this game very complicated and very interesting. One of them is, um, so let me see if I made, I want to make sure I covered everything. So highlight ships, shipyards, one of them is called a collision. So, um, that happens when, uh, two ships, uh, happen to occupy the same cell or are headed towards the same cell, then there's a collision. And there's, there's a way to resolve or how the game resolves that. Basically the ship with the smallest amount of highlight destroys the bigger ship and steals all its highlight. It's, that's, that's the role of the game. Um, another type of collision is when an enemy shipyard attacks your ship, uh, when an enemy ship attacks your shipyard. Um, I think, uh, let me remember, yeah. For instance, ships can collide with enemy shipyards, which destroys the ship, the ship's cargo, and the enemy shipyard. But I don't think anybody benefits from that apart from losing uh, resources. There is a cost associated with all these different actions. So for example, for us to mine highlight, we gain 25% of the highlight in a cell. If, let me zoom a little bit more. If we attack a heavier cargo ship, we still, we destroy their ship and steal their highlight. That's like a hunter strategy. Um, another one we can do is to convert a ship into a shipyard. It costs us 500 units of highlight and we start with 5,000. Uh, once we have a shipyard, you can spawn as many ships as you want, but you have to pay 500 units of energy to do so. And when you deposit highlight after you collect it, your score goes up by whatever amount you have in your cargo. Cool. I'm gonna pause here for questions, comments, feedback, just to make sure that you understand the, the, the layout. Um, I wanted to point out, um, once you deposit your 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 halide at a shipyard, it's yours forever and can never be uh, taken from you, unless you choose to to create new shipyards or new, uh, or sorry, new spawn new ships. Then then we'll use some of your halide. Perfect. So I had I had one doubt. Uh, so what happens like if an enemy ship collides with my shipyard? Do I lose all the halide on the shipyard? that I had stored? No, that was that was the point I was trying to make is that okay. once you've deposited your halite, it's it's gone to the the different universe or whatever where no one can get to it. So okay, but but if it's still on the ship um, and my yeah. ship is destroyed by an enemy ship, then I lose it. Okay. That's right. Okay, cool. you, thank you. You lose the shipyard, so you probably have to spawn another shipyard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you Thank lose you. infrastructure, but the amount, the money is deposited in another bank account, I guess. <laughs> That's the analogy I have in mind. Cool. Um, this, this notebook has a, sam a sample agent and I'll just want to cover a little bit the structure because I build heavily on this, uh, on this um, strategy and on this game. So first of all, the entire file needs to be writable and you have this uh, uh, notebook command uh, that will be stored as submission.py. All the imports that you're using for your agent need to be included here. In this case, we're using this uh, highlight helpers, every module from there. We have this method called get direction to, 
let's say we're in one, one cell of the universe and we're gonna to go to another cell, uh, we need a way to navigate there. And we do this through this method of figuring out where we are from the left, east, north, south, west of the destination. And if so, we use something called an action space that we'll cover soon. But basically, based on where we are, if we want to go west, then we need to somehow direct our ship west. If our shipyard is north, we need somehow to direct our ship to go north. And this is the, the direction space that our ship can take, north, east, south, west, up, down, left, right. And the agent, when, when we play the game, starts with what is the size of our board, 21 by 21? What is the, the board state? Uh, we've seen this in other games as well, basically. Uh, what is the state of each cell? How many ships are there? How many shipyards? What is the configuration? How much headlight is in each cell and so forth? And the current player, which is our player. Then some simple logistics of how do we kickstart this game? If we don't have any ships, if middle ships is zero, the length, or if we don't have any shipyards, then our next action would be to spawn a shipyard. That's the very first thing we're gonna do. And uh, then if we, um, yeah. If we have a ship, but we don't have any shipyard, if we have a ship but no shipyard, we're gonna convert the existing ship into a shipyard. And that's actually what happens in the beginning. We start with one ship, we convert it to a shipyard and the shipyard spawns another ship. We end up with one ship and one shipyard. We can, we can spawn as many ships or shipyards as we want. The only cost is 500 units of energy. So that's the only cost. Then this loop here does something for every ship in our fleet. If we don't have a next action for our current ship, there are, this is the strategy of, the, of this basic bot. If we have less than 200 units of energy, we're gonna be in collect mode. We're gonna add, uh, uh, advise our ship to collect more highlight. If we have more than 500, we better deposit it, make sure that we, you know, we, we, we get those gains before either somebody attacks us or, or we lose the shipyard. And then how do we implement this? If it's collect, based on where the best cell is in terms of highlight, we're gonna uh, advise our ship to go there. So if there's more ship, uh, north of me, I'll head north. If it's more ships south of me, I'll head south. And I'll return that as my next direction. And if it's deposit, we use that get direction two from our current ship position to our first shipyard. Um, let's navigate there so we can deposit the cargo. So we do that for every ship and, um, and hopefully that will make our game a little bit more performing than our random agent. So in this case, we're running submission.py against three other agents. And submission.py is the first agent, which is the yellow. The second one is the red. The third one is the green. The fourth one is the purple. And let's see how this modification of looking for highlight and after a threshold coming back home and submitting it, how does it do compared to a random strategy? So random strategies are already spawning multiple ships and shipyards. Ours only has one ship. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit. One ship, we're already at 5,000 units. The other ones are at 300 units. So you see this repetitive nature, like uh, you see that our ship is kind of gets stuck in this local optimum here between these two points and it just keeps oscillating between them. Um, then comes back and then finds another random path, comes back. And then at the end of the game, we have about 7,000 uh, units of energy and the other ones have about 200, 400. So we can beat a random player. That's the end of the story here or the summary. And this notebook actually uh, motivates us to explore the more, the complete game rules. There's more rules than this. Uh, actually, it motivates us to look at the highlight SDK with which David will cover uh, soon. It also tells us to look at the notebooks that other players or agents have, have worked on on the competition page and uh, as well as take a look at the introduction to AI and reinforcement learning course that we covered. That's a quick intro to this game. Um, I'll pause here again for comments, feedback, questions, and then I'll head and hand it over to David. Let me stop sharing. And enable sharing.
so far so good, I guess. Cool. Cool. So David will come across the the SDK and how is this game structured and how can we utilize it? You're muted, David. Okay. Can you Perfect. hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. So if you notice George in his very first line of his uh, submission.py, he's his agent, he was importing a, a helper class. And that is the SDK that they've offered for this that saves you some, uh, some time coding and, and simplifies some of the coding for you. Uh, the first thing is it has, it has several objects which you can call and utilize and, and you saw George use them throughout in the sample. The first one is the board, which is your game board overall. Um, within it, you can, you can um, look at every cell within that board, all the ships, including your enemies and yours, all the shipyards, and then anything about the players, which there are four of. Um, you can get yourself you're the current player. So you can, instead of going through this dictionary to try to find yourself, you can call this helper meth, this helper object and get yourself here. You know, see how that might be used later on. Um, so those are some of the useful things you can do. I mentioned that every position on the board is called a cell. Um, you can get the X, Y coordinates for that position. You can determine how much halite is available in that cell. So if you're trying to decide maybe what is the optimal cell to go to to collect halite, you can look at that. Um, you can look at for every uh, ship that's on that cell, which would be one, of course, but you can look at that ship and figure out whose it is and how much halite it has and things like that. Uh, you can look at a shipyard. You can look at, you know, if there's no shipyard there, these things will be uh, set to none. So there'll be uh, nothing there. That'll give you a clue if there's a ship there. And then you can, uh, once you're on a cell, you can then look at the cell to the north, south, and east, and west by, by these methods. So if you want to move to the next cell and examine it via that. Um, the ship object is useful for looking at your ship as well as other ships. Each ship, and I should mention that these all these, all these uh, properties and objects are available at the end of the turn. So this is between turns when you're deciding what to do, where you would use these. Um, the ship object, you can look at how much halite's on the ship, where it is, um, the cell it's on, or, or just the actual X, Y position, uh, whose ship it is, the player that it belongs to. And if it's your ship, you can see the next action. So what are you gonna do north and south or whatever. And you can also set this variable. This is how you determine where your ships are gonna move to. Um, you also have a shipyard object. Again, you can see where it is with this position and the cell that's there. You can determine whose it is by the player and you can set an action on it such as spawn a new ship would be a, an example. Um, remember I talked about getting a player, getting your yourself as the current player. The reason you might wanna do that, you wanna check how much halite you have. Uh, you have a, a dictionary which is got all of your next actions that all your ships and shipyards are gonna uh, do. So if you need to go through those and examine them, you can get a list of all your ships. This by this way, this Y in here is a typo, it's just ships. Um, and you can examine all your shipyards. So these are very, very useful. You'll see us do a for loop through our, our list of ships and a for loop through our list of shipyards to set what they're gonna do and decide what our actions are gonna be. I mentioned that every position on the board has a point object, which is these X and Y objects. And that is useful when you're trying to figure out directions and uh, positions and we'll go through that. So these are the main objects and their associated methods that you can use. Um, there is a- Can I ask a question about the player method? Absolutely. Player class. Um, it was a little further down. Yeah, it's down, I'm getting uh, it. Second to last one, I think. There we go. Uh, so we have access to all the player IDs is current player, but next actions, do we, we don't get to see what our opponents are doing. We only see what's, yeah, we only see what's we're setting for ourselves. 
So if you pull, call this on your opponents, it's going to be uh, empty. OK. Yeah. Um, so this is all coming from an actual GitHub repository where this helper Python is defined. So if you need to know more details, like the question Robert was asking, if you want to see how that's coded and everything, it's, it's all available on this GitHub repository here. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go through the code itself. I just wanted to go over the, the SDK. Um, did you see that when I switched screens? I hope so, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'll put that in the. Uh, awesome. I'll put that in the chat. So I'm gonna turn it back to George, and he's gonna show you his uh, top agent that he wrote. <sighs> Pressure is on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you, David. That was super useful. So I'll share with you um, my two agents that I built for this purpose. And thanks, Robert, for sharing the, the link of my notebook. It's also on our, on our Meetup page. Um, so my approach was here. Let's, let me take the basic uh, agent that um, the Kaggle course had, and let's see, let's play it a few times. Let's see how it does. And let's see, how can I improve it based on very basic uh, strategies, nothing using neural networks, nothing using deep reinforcement learning, some very basic, you know, uh, pro programmatic approach. That, that was, that was my, my approach here. Cool. So in my notebook, I have some links here for the competition itself. And then, um, I'm creating the Kaggle environments as well here, just to make sure I have the latest version. The cheat sheet that David covered is super useful for me when I was uh, building uh, my agent. Make sure that um, I could calculate, you know, distance, no distance, but if there's a ship near me or a shipyard near me and things so forth. Um, I just use Seaborn for some visualizations, time, just to time how long something takes, pandas for building a report and NumPy for I think they're just the report building side. Um, in terms of episodes, the, the the by default, I think the game will run for 400 episodes. For me, that was a too long of a time period to iterate and quickly develop my agent. So I just set it up to something uh, much smaller, like 10, 10 epochs or 10 episodes. And then my first strategy is what I called convert, spawn, collect, deposit. Um, and actually, I think this is the one that was already in the notebook. Let me see if I can, did any change at all here. No, this is the one from the notebook. So I call this CSCD, the benchmark, just to get an idea of what is my benchmark. Again, this one, all it does is spawns, collects, comes back to the shipyard, deposits, and so forth. So I wanted to play this strategy against the random ones, just like in the notebook. And the the yellow one for ten epochs is is the one that's um, using the strategy. Ten epochs is not much you can see in ten epochs, but I have other ones that run for longer. Um, you can you can uh, from this end state you can get the list of the results for every player, and this is how I'm building the report so that I can track over time how things are doing. For, for different strategies and different players. Cool. Then the next thing would be instead of random, let's make everybody play the same, this basic strategy. And again, 10 epochs, there's not much, hap much happening. Um, but I want to cover my strategy here that, that, that I was able to come up with. Um, I was iterating a lot with different thresholds and different ideas and so forth. So in the end, I came up with maybe like an agent strategy dictionary of how do I want my, my agents to act? And I'll cover this uh, over here. Debug is for me just to print a bunch of statements to see what's going on in the game. By default, it's, it's false. Collect threshold is um, if, I, if my ship is below this threshold, it will continue collecting highlight. If my ship is below the deposit threshold, it will not deposit. Otherwise, the next action will be come back home and deposit. And I have something called invest threshold, which basically tells me if I'm above, above this threshold, start spawning more ships. So my strategy was, if, you have, if I have enough money, 
let's just spawn more ships or spawn more shipyards. That was my, my strategy. And I actually was able to implement just this spawning new ships. I have a max ships. I wanna make sure I can control how many ships are <laughs> in my fleet and a max shipyards as well. And my, my, my goal was, okay, can I try different combinations of these thresholds and how do they interact and how, how do they perform over time? So I have like what is called like conservative strategy, which basically says, go mine a little bit of highlight. If you have more than 500, come back. I have more like an aggressive strategy, which says, keep going 10 times more than this, basically. Keep going out there, collect at least a thousand um, highlight. And if you have more than 5,000, come back. And I was more aggressive in terms of investing. I was investing early in, in ships and some other ones where I basically increased the number of ships. So let me cover what I changed in this basic one. Uh, some of the challenges that I had were my ships colliding with each other. That was the number one challenge that you have to solve in this, in this competition. Um, it sounds trivial, but it's not as easy. And you have to navigate when you go from one location to the other, you wanna make sure that the next cell you're going to is available or is not taken by a, another ship. Uh, more advanced techniques could look if, could say if there's an enemy ship and that enemy ship has more cargo than me, let me attack it. But I didn't, I didn't implement that, that feature yet. So, so yeah, me doing navigation, I'm looking basically if where I'm going, if there's, um, if there's a ship there or not. And if, if not, then go ahead and do that move. Otherwise don't, yeah, otherwise wait, else none. I created a method here called evaluate the conflict next actions. This was to me the, a little bit more complicated method that I did, but basically the, the overview is, I ask all my ships, give me all your next actions. Um, give me, sorry, give me your current position. Give me your next actions. Let me calculate what would the result be, where you would be based on your current actions. And if I see a conflict based on that, basically if two of my ships are gonna collide or go to the shipyard at the same time or you know, things like that, then one of them has to back off. And I just, based on order, um, I let the first ship do its, its, uh, its next step, but the second or the consequent ships will basically stay where they are. So this is how I was able to deconflict uh, my ships uh, colliding with each other. And I'm, I was using this dictionary of, if you want to go north, east, southwest, or staying put, and um, again, yeah, me basically iterating over each ship and each action and trying to, trying to calculate here the, what would be the next position. And if, if somehow I detected a collision, then um, I would make the current action as none, otherwise current action would be whatever, uh, whatever my strategy decided. And the other things that I changed, let's see here, convert spawn, that was the same. Yeah, I changed all this to be threshold based. So if my ship has less than collect threshold, keep collecting. If my ship has more than deposit threshold, come back home to deposit. Um, if I have more than invest, then spawn a new ship. And yeah, this is just some avoid collision avoidance, I would say, code here. And yeah, that's it. So this is what I called the previous strategy, collect, you know, deposit plus invest. And let me compare that with my previous strategy. And let's see where we are. I ran this for 400. And the new improved strategy is the yellow one. So you see immediately I start spawning multiple ships because I'm above that um, 4,000, I think, uh, threshold. So let me fast forward it for us. I have four ships. You see most of them are out somehow. At some point they need to come back and they do come back. And some of them are here, they're still collecting. After a while, I think 5,000 units, they come back. So this strategy gave me a little bit of better score than the, the previous one. And it looks like I was headed in the right direction. Um, and let me look at a visualization of all the strategies. So the way that I, that I organize this is, 
in the x-axis i have strategy player so and this one is player one using that basic strategy and player two using random 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 that was the first outcome the other one is where everybody was using the basic strategy somehow for me in this round they perform about the same for a thousand then this improved one is the yellow one that I just covered that gave me about 12,000 something units of energy in the end of 400 rounds. And the other one was the basic strategy gave me about 8,000. Um, something to keep in mind is if you run this again, you're not going to get exactly the same scores because the highlight amount is random every time it's, it's created in the beginning of a game. So this game, it's a good idea to, to do this iteratively and maybe get like an average score as, as, as David will share with us. So that's my agent, and I'll stop sharing. I don't know if you have any questions about my agent. Very, very simple. Try to do your thing and try not to collide on your own ships. <laughs> any questions on George's? All right, so I'm going to show you not the evolution because I did write a lot of different agents, but this is the, the final result here. Um, I did a very similar process to George to come to mind, but I'm going to uh, create a few functions at the beginning here. Um, the first one I didn't finish, so this doesn't actually do anything, but this is eventually going to be what George does, where if you have two ships and they're about to uh, move to the same cell at the same time, this is to avoid that, that conflict. And so I, I haven't got this, but George did a great job of writing. A, uh, that so I might steal it from him. Um, the next method here is when I'm going around trying to uh, harvest uh, halite. This is the uh, or collect halite. This is my choice of what cell should the ship that I'm looking at go to. Um, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to move to the adjacent cell that has the most halite, and it's also going to move and avoid a current cell that has um, either a ship or a shipyard present there. So I don't want to crash. That was one of the things that I had to solve right away was my ships crashing into each other or my own shipyards or other shipyards. So that does it by uh, basically uh, running through the different north, south, west. Um, I'm tracking what has which cell has the most halite. And then I'm going to look at, um, you know, to make sure there's no shipyard there and no ship there and make a choice based on that. So once I get the best action and the best most halide set based on all these, then I'm gonna, gonna actually choose that for the ship. Um, the next method is I wanted to determine if there's any ships uh, adjacent to this shipyard. And the reason why I do that is when I wanna spawn a new ship from a shipyard, I don't wanna spawn it where there are other ships very close so uh, for a couple of reasons, in the beginning, I had a problem where the ships would collide with each other. So that was always a danger and never quite solved that. But the other thing is, if there's already ships mining the halide in that area, I'd rather go to a different shipyard that doesn't have very many ships around it. So I'm kind of covering the board. In the best scenario, you would do some type of look at the complete board and all the halide and go to the area where the most cells have the most, or sorry, the most halide is concentrated in the cells around your shipyard. But it basically this looks um, to see if there's any, uh, you know, ships out there in the north, south, east, west, and returns true or false based on that. I'll use that later on. Um, the next method was one George already showed you, where you're you're trying to get from position this from position to the two position and you just want to know which which way is the best way to go so i'm going to go north south or east west to get there um i'm going to uh also do one where i based on when i'm ready to make a deposit i want to set the direction to reach the nearest shipyard so here i'm going to pass in my position of my current ship I'm going to get all my shipyards and determine with this distance function, what is the closest shipyard to me? And then I'll use that get direction that I showed you before to determine the, the direction I need to go to get to that nearest shipyard. Because um, the last, let's see, the next one I'm going to look at is 
I have a heuristic that determines if I need to spawn more ships. Um, so it looks at the current number of ships I have out in the field and what my total halite level is. And this is, this is not something that I just have done based on some trial and error. Again, this would be a great place to uh, build some parameters and do a, a nice uh, uh, hyperparameter kind of tuning and let it learn from that. Um, I didn't have time to do that. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to do uh, the following when I was uh, basically going to convert a ship to a shipyard. What I found happening was I would often just, once I reached a certain halite level and my trigger hit for uh, converting, I would uh, convert right where I was. And oftentimes I converted into a shipyard right on top of uh, a place that produced halite. So I found that it was often better to find a place on the board, which you often have where there's no halite position, uh, production. It's a, just an empty, an empty place. And that benefited me because then when I respawned a ship from that shipyard, I, was, I had you know, available halite producing cells around me. Um, it also, in, in a sense, also looks again to see if, make sure there's no ship or, or yard already present in that cell. Um, so here I'm looking to make sure there's no shipyard and no ship, and also that there's no halite in that cell. Um, so here's the actual agent. Um, I built this to maximize the halite mining, try to avoid the enemy ships, and deposit halite at a regular basis. So it's going to use all those methods that I showed up above. Um, so I'm going to start going through my ships, my list of ships here. And if my halide is above 1,000 and I have no shipyards, I'm going to go ahead and convert that best cell, which is going to be that empty cell, and create a ship. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to create a create a, a shipyard, right? So this will this will kick off right away. I'll create my first shipyard. I'll uh, I have I'm counting how many yards I have as I go, and uh, I want to reach a certain uh, number. So if it's a thousand, if it's greater than a thousand, I don't have any decree. And here's some more heuristics that if I'm above two thousand and my number of shipyards is below ten, I'm going to do it again. Uh, if I'm above ten thousand, I'm going to go up to fifteen yards. And then it keeps growing. Um, then if, uh, if I have enough ships and I have enough shipyards, I have, well, this is, uh, sh sorry, if I have enough shipyards, I'm gonna tell this ship to go ahead and uh, mine if I'm on a, a cell that has halide greater than uh, 100, I'm gonna go ahead and mine, which means I'm just gonna sit there and mine. I'm not gonna move. Otherwise, I'm going to move to the next best cell, which is the cell that has more, uh, the most halite. So, so that's what I do with each ship during each turn. Um, for the shipyards, I follow a different procedure. I'm going to go through those. And um, I'm going to look and see if I have no ships instead of variable. I'm going to look and see if I have the uh, calling that function above to see if I need to create more ships or if I'm already at my limit. And that'll be based on how many ships I have currently and my amount of halite. Um, and then I'm also gonna look and see if I, I use that method above to uh, create, uh, if there's any local ships around the, the shipyard when I'm creating a ship. So this, this comes into play when I need to spawn, if, I, if this need more is true and I need to spawn a ship, I'll, I'll make sure there's no ships already in the vicinity of the shipyard. So the first thing I'm gonna look, if I have no ships, then I'm gonna create a, a shipyard. Um, if I have, if I need more ships I'm, and there's no sh uh, sh local ship in the vicinity, I'm gonna create one. Else I'm just gonna do nothing. So that's the last thing I'll do. Um, I wanted at this point, I wanted to have it check the conflicts to make sure none of my ships were gonna collide with each other. Uh, this is not implemented, it's just a placeholder. And I'll return all the actions. So that is my agent and we have George's agent. George, do you want to go through? Uh, a question before we go to mine. Yeah, uh, if there's any questions on mine. When you had more than hundred and next action equal none, 
do you have another rule that says come back home? Do you have like a deposit rule or when are ships coming back home for deposit? Ah, good question. So on my ships, that's not it, sorry. Um, so I've got a, if you notice in each of these cases, it's gonna go uh, convert best ship. So if it, let's take like this last case, right? So- Oh, I see, if you're in between. If I'm in between, yeah, I'm gonna go move to the nearest shipyard, right? Yeah. So that's my scenario. Got it. I like that. So you have yeah. like milestones. If you reach those milestones, invest. Otherwise, yeah. come back home. Yeah. If none of these other conditions is met, right, then I'm going to just drop and go deposit. Got it. But that's only if my ship is, you know, above 2,000. So that was my my limit there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right. Could I ask a, a quick question? Yes. Um, when you had um, you had a math dot. H Y P O T, I believe, and I just wasn't sure what that was. Do you think you could just explain that really quick? It was up. It was up a few. It was methods. called what? It was like H Y P O T. Oh, oh, for the calculating I, distance. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I just was confused what uh, how that worked, or if you could just explain it quickly. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's the it's the hypotenuse of the. So this is just a way when you calculate distance, it's just distracting. You know the the yard position, the ship positions. And it's giving me the the distance between them. Um, oh, I see now. Are you just doing? It's a distance formula with the difference between the positions. Yeah. With the y's yeah. and the x's, that actually makes sense now. Yeah. yeah. So Euclidean distance, yeah. Like the x, x diff y. and the y diff, and then you take that botanist and mm -hmm. that'll give you your distance. And then I was comparing that to figure out uh, which one is the minimum distance. I'll res I reset it if it's less than one. Once I have that. Then I know where to go, um, which ship, which ship, and which where's the nearest shipyard that I want to go to. So the nearest is set to that yard. Thank you. No problem. I had a question: What was the benefit versus of creating a new shipyard versus depositing at an existing one? I mean, do you want a minimum number of shipyards, or is there a maximum, or how does that work? So the the difference was uh, if you, um, you know, if you already have a lot of shipyards. Um, your ship, if, it, if you want to convert it to a shipyard, which will automatically deposit what you have left, there is a cost of 500 mm -hmm. to convert a ship to a shipyard. So you'll lose $500, uh, 500 points versus going uh, to a shipyard. There's probably a heuristic that we could put in for winning. Okay. winning so it's, it's more, more matter of distance. So, so I did, you could have one shipyard, but if you have to go a long ways to get back to it and then get out to a Place to mine halite that would be a cost that would be a reason why you might just create a new shipyard yeah and yeah. then of course it's it hits you twice when you when you take a ship and you convert it to a shipyard you lose 500 then mm -hmm. and you deposit whatever you have that's over 500 so you get to keep that part but then you've lost a ship so if you want to have a minimum number of ships out there which you really need to have to be harvesting mm -hmm. you now have to spend another 500 dollars to create the new ship so it's mm -hmm. a it's a thousand point loss. Okay. If that makes sense. But there probably is there probably is times when you're way on the other side of the board that it might be a good uh, heuristic to use. So. And often, as you saw during some of the, the simulations, uh, an enemy will collide with your shipyard and you lose some of your shipyard. So you do want to create new ones when you're when you're down. Right. In fact, you couldn't lose a shipyard. Oh, you can if 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 the enemy collides with your shipyard, the ship is gone. They lose their cargo, and the shipyard is also destroyed. You don't lose your points. Your halide is deposited. It's it's good to go, but you lose your shipyard. I see. Yeah. Wait, so if if someone collides with your shipyard, both their ship and your shipyard, and the shipyard is destroyed. Yes. And then where does the halide that was on their ship go? It's gone. It's gone. Nobody gets it. That's my understanding. Is that is yeah. that your understanding, George? It's, it looked like I said it was lost. Yeah. 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 I like this agent a lot of yours, David. Very. You'll see. He. I don't want to spoil it, but he's a very smart agent. <laughs> <laughs> you have two agents, by the way. Uh, this is the what I call the complicated one. You have a second one as well. 
Yeah, so my second agent was the one that I built before this, and, and I did sort of what George did. Every agent, I added new capacity or capability, you know, to do some new feature. The second agent is basically the same as the one above, except for, I think, maybe, let's see, it moves to the best cell. What is it? It, it, it avoids the enemy. It's, it's, it's maybe not as good. Uh, let's see, what does it do? I mean, you can see the logic here in the ships is much smaller. The shipyards are pretty complicated. You don't spawn a lot of shipyards, right? You don't do that. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's not it's not near as complicated as I could have just put a random. It was just oh, it was, it was my second best one. I was surprised though; it's pretty simple, and it beats some of the ones that I had that were more complicated. Yeah. Cool. Any questions we... for David? before we have my agent compete against his agent. <laughs> I don't want this moment to come, but it has to come. <laughs> okay. are, are there significant interaction effects between the agents? Oof. By, by that I mean, like, does your score depend much on your opponents, right? Clearly, in you can imagine a case where it doesn't depend on them at all. And then depending on your strategy, it might depend on them a lot. So I guess I'm trying to figure out where we are in amongst that spectrum. I found that it, it really does depend a lot. Um, that as I competed some against each other, I was, I was surprised that an agent that I had done four iterations ago now started to do better. You know, when I, even though I had an agent, added a new agent that was more sophisticated and, and won the battle, like one of my previous agents started to do better just because uh, it had a more effective strategy against my new, my new improved agent. And, and that brings up a good point. So this was a competition um, where you submitted your agent and Kaggle battled you against other people's agent um, at random times and, and you got scored that way. Well, you, you can no longer submit to this competition. The competition ended a, a couple, uh, I don't know, a year ago or some a, a while back. So we tried, George and I tried to simulate this by playing against each other. Um, but as Robert's pointing out, when you're playing against yourself, you're kind of biased in the sense that you might develop a great strategy to beat your own agents, but it, it might be very ineffective against someone else. So I just wanted to show, um, we wanted to uh, check the, the performance of our agents against each other. And so here's a little method we wrote. Um, it brings in a, a, a list of agents and we're gonna track the scores for these for a number of rounds. And each round is those 400 steps that we saw in the simulation, the, the graphic simulation. Um, we're gonna append those scores that we get from each round and do an average of them. And George added some start here where he's printing it out as we as we go so you can see it. But then we'll plot we'll plot that uh, at the end. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice little visualization. So so that's one thing we added. And then down here, pretty far down. Let's see. There's my second. There's George's where we copied in his. Hold on. Can I can I yes. mention quickly about mine? Um, if uh -huh. you scroll up a little bit, or if you don't if you don't mind stop sharing, I can share. Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry, friends. So yeah, so for me, that was David one and David two. That 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 was his agent, and David one was a complicated one. David two was um, the less complicated one, but nonetheless pretty well performing. For me, agent one, I experimented with a few. Uh, I found this hyperparameters uh, to perform a little bit better for me. Again, if you have less than a thousand, keep collecting. If you have more than five thousand come back home and deposit. And if you have more than 2000, just spawn ships, no shipyards. That was George one and avoiding all the collisions so forth. George two was a little bit, I think the only thing I changed was number of ships, be a little bit more aggressive and maybe be a little bit more conservative when to invest. Uh, that was the only change. That was George two. Cool. So let's see now, we are playing David one, which is the yellow, David two, which is the green, uh, sorry, the red, uh, George one, which is the green and George two, which is the purple. 
against each other. So you'll see that David right away, let me zoom a little bit more, will start spawning. Who, who's which color? I'm yellow upper, and red. Upper one is David, lower one is me. So yellow and red is David, green and purple is me. Um, so far we still have one shipyard. I think some of our country has not met yet. Um, oh, the red one spawned a new one for you, David. Yellow one spawned. So you did, oh, the, yep, the yellow one has four shipyards. Whoa, look at this. So this is like what I call like a exponential rise phenomenon where like David is basically colonizing Mars here. <laughs> I only have two shipyards <laughs> laying back here. But I have a lot of highlight, but he has basically more, more potential. <laughs> yeah. We probably should have randomized somehow our starting position on the board too. I don't know if it would have made any difference. Their strategy is very, very smart. Okay, I'm gonna forward a little bit faster. Do you get to choose your starting position? No, you're going to. You don't get to choose your starting position. Well, That's you choose the, each player starts in the same spot, right? Well, the yellow is yeah, always in the yeah. same spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the halide is always distributed symmetrically, so it's such that if you play the identical deterministic agents against each other, they always tie, right? Yeah, yeah I guess it doesn't really matter. But. So look at this, in the end of the game, David has shipyards all over the place, even in my neighborhood. Uh, red one has five, uh, the yellow one has 17, what in the world? I only have one and three ships and one and four ships. So clearly, I need to be investing in shipyards as well, not just ships. So your green one beat my red one in this, in this game. I'll come to that later. <laughs> cool. Then George, can I ask a really fast question? Uh, it, it looked like the more the yellow, uh, you know, propagated, the more it, it seemed like it was building on its success. Is that accurate? And if so, would there be any kind of like, I don't know, first mover advantage or something? And like, could like a, a not, not as strong of a model, like beat the other one because it gets there first kind of thing? Or, or is that a misunderstanding of like the way this whole model reminds me of startups and getting traction, being the first one to the market and, you know, going first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you if you go first to a rich area, you know, where there's a lot of highlight and assuming you have a shipyard near you, yeah, you'll, you'll be golden, right? You'll be collecting nonstop. I did find, I mean, you can be too aggressive. So if you're too aggressive and yeah. you lose, you lose too much, you don't have enough resources to rebuild. I had that happen a few times. The, the, the interesting thing here is, which I, I find it weird, the energy sources keep increasing over time. So the cells, if you see them become brighter and brighter. It'd be interesting if they, it was the opposite, right? If they diminished. Yeah. Anyway, this is one game, okay? And again, one game is to say the best, kind of random, I would say 40% random, 60% strategy, because if I run it again, the outcome will be slightly different. But we wanted to run it multiple times and I run our agents three times. And I wanted to show you here how we did. So David Wan did an average of 28,000 score. And you see here his, his games, he did a fantastic game, 41,000 the first one, 14,000, 29,000. His second one did on average 8,000. Mine did on average 4,000. And my second one, which is the complicated one, did 11,000. Um, then another one, uh, 12,000, 7,000, 4,000, 14,000. To get these numbers, there's a little bit of selection bias. I had to run this cell multiple times, okay? On average, David was outperforming me out of the bat. I have to say that, and you'll see it in the, in the charts. Um, then I added the charts here, so you can see uh, David one is blue, David two is orange, and I am red and, uh, and green. So this is just three rounds. Uh, five rounds, let's look at five rounds. So you have a fantastic round, the first one, decent, decent, then fantastic one, but the average is like completely different scale. Like you're, the first one, David, yours is like 20K, 10K, mine is like 1K, 8K. So it's like two or three times better performing. Okay, let's do it for 10 rounds. 
clearly uh, you can see like the longer we play it, your first agent has like some kind of, not some kind, it has a shipyard and ship advantage or superiority. If you look at this, it's a different scale altogether. We have a, uh, there's a good question in the chat. I don't I assume that you have okay. Go for it, ask it. Uh, do you think that Kaggle might turn the Halite competition into a playground at any point? It'd be nice to be able to submit and actually go against a broad spectrum of other agents. I, I agree. I think if they did a, um, one of the, some of the playgrounds have a, they restart every month. Yeah. And that would be nice to have this run for a month. I mean, they couldn't run it forever because eventually how many, how many agents can they run at once? But mm -hmm. yeah, if they ran like a monthly competition with it where they reset it and started again, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard anything of converting this to a, an open playground where you can what they do have is a very similar type of game ongoing right now a competition which we'll hear about next week i think yep yep but coming back here again like your agents david outperform mine like out of the bat and you can see it only just by looking at one game how well they perform so on average as well like it was like two or three times better performing than, than mine so kudos um, going back to the competition, I want to share with you just a sample play from, I think this is a top 50 player of how the game looks like. Let me zoom out a little bit for us. So I think, let's see. Um, so these are four different players. Um, yep, playing against each other. So you get to see how some of the different strategies, look at this. Some of them are one shipyard, multiple ships, like I was going, and many of them I think are, I don't know. I wow, keep 13 track, but, ships in one shipyard. 13, yeah. But I think the strategy, I think it's less about mining and more about attacking, I think. <laughs> huh. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you see the halide is, is pretty low. They're definitely, they're definitely taking care of the halide, yeah. They're definitely taking the halide. They're investing heavily in ships. Um, so let's see. Interesting. So I saw Red get one of its uh, shipyards wiped out and it immediately created a new one. So it seems to always create one. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. The other one seemed to be running two. Yep. Six, two, so nine, one, 19, one, six, two, 11. Red is way ahead. Oh, a lot of collisions here. Oh, uh, you're right. There's there's hardly a time where a measurable amount of halide ever grows on any cell. Because there's what, 40, 50, 60? <laughs> it's interesting too, like if you look at like the purple and some of those, they stay very close to their shipyard. Mm. See, it's like they, they work as a group. Yeah, yeah. There's algorithms, there's like swarm optimization algorithms. And I wonder if that's some of what these agents are doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was the 50th play. Let me look at the first play here and look at how that looks like. All right. Let's zoom in a little bit. So third, fourth, second, first. The first position I think player is purple. So this is the top four players basically playing against each other. So let's check it out. Oh, what is going on? Okay, nine one nine one seven two eight two. I need like a commentator here of what's going on. <laughs> um, okay, the purple one has more ships. Fourteen. Ah, red one fifteen. Purple one eighteen. Yellow one fifteen. Green one thirteen. Ooh, purple no, one is dangerous. No, purple one is going to other people's neighborhoods and trying to explore or steal halite. I don't know, 20, 20 ships, 22, wow. A lot more ships for the purple. <laughs> so we're learning from the strategy then. <laughs> Is the solution to flood the market with your product? <laughs> look at the overall halite. Look at the cumulative halite numbers, they're so low. They're very low because you keep spawning ships, you know? 
and it, it looks like all purple ships are, are close to its origin it doesn't look like they're distributed but the oh there's one all way up top five right? shipyards for the purple one yeah yeah one two three four five so he has the southeast part and one in the northwest Ooh. i'm surprised they're not hitting each other 49 ships. Wow. So it's gonna... well, I, so that's the key. I remember, well, someone said that none of the agents are really deep learning based. They're all mostly heuristics. So maybe the heuristics are coded to just not collide. Oh, sorry. This this is from the competition, Alexander. I'm pretty sure this is the I know. Yeah. Oh, you think it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I recalled that the winning agent like was all heuristics. Yeah. So uh, it's the guy, Tom, Tom, who's the number one guy. Oh, is it? Yeah, he wrote like he he is from uh, uh, Deep Mind, okay. and so he knows a lot about reinforcement learning. But he uh, he wrote like eleven thousand lines of code of heuristics. What? Oh god! <laughs> what about the other ones? Probably they may have used reinforcement. There are reinforcement learning approaches in this. Got, got it. That's what I would expect. All right. Look at this. Sixty. I mean, he. Wow. He dominated. The, the planet here. <laughs> but I'm oh, surprised you're not colliding. Oh, okay, they're colliding. 57. He lost three. He lost 54, 52. He's losing. What's going on? Wow, his points are high, though. 50. This is like a threshold or something. He's ahead, so he's taking out everybody else's ships. He's whoa, taking whoa. out everybody, period. The red player is gone. What happened to the red player? I was about to say, what happened to the red player? I think if you don't, I think 17. you get taken out of the game entirely. Yeah, yeah, by 18, 17. No, we, right chart, we need a chart of number of ships and shipyards over time here to see. 17. At some point, he just drops out of the game. What's going on? Let's see. 15, 14, 11, 10, 8, 7. Yeah, the purple one basically surrounded him, right? So purple one is basically attacking him. Yeah. Yep. Oof, look at that corner. <laughs> Look at that cornering here. Huh. Poor, poor red one had nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nope, I'm capturing that part of the mic. This is insane. All right. Cool. Oh, wow. In the end, it was just this turn against each other. Is that what happened? Oh, the green one has two, yellow one has five. Purple was 22 out of 60. Wow, so it was battle in the end. I hope this taught us a lesson to make peace with each other and share what we have. <laughs> this was crazy. Cool. I like this competition a lot. It's just super challenging just to have a decent running agent. That's, that was my challenge. <laughs> cool, friends. Any questions about the competition or our agents? I'm assuming that like uh, these notebooks are not public. Like the leader, the first guy's notebook. Can we see it? Uh, not the first guy, but maybe like the hundredth guy or something. You can see. And there's also a code uh, section where you can see other people's code. Let me see. Actually, I think the, the first guy may have put his on GitHub. I can't. Have... Oh, he did. He so he was required to do a write up. So in the um, on the competition page where they have the discussion. Mm -hmm. see him as one of the top in the discussion and i believe he has a okay if i remember right he does have a github this is the 200th guy and i, and again, I don't know i don't want to delve into this but um yeah it looks like heuristics to me avoidance matrix attack matrix highlight convert okay so you're saying, um, is it a discussion or code maybe? First way winning solution, okay. So yeah, this is something that hopefully uh, Dimitri can cover for us next week. Uh, he'll, he'll go over some of the leaderboard on some of the example notebooks and maybe share some notes with us. Um, we wanted to take a deeper dive um, on, the, on this competition. And speaking of next week, Alexander will cover, will cover for us uh, this other competition called Hungry Geese, where this game is similar to Snake Game, where you have a grid, you're trying to navigate your agent into a food source, 
I'm not fully familiar with the rules, so I'm looking forward to that as well next week. Cool. Again, this session is recorded, friends, and it will be posted on our YouTube page. Um, that's all we had for you. Any questions, feedback, comments? Hi, I had one question, like not related to this example, but like in general. So like, like I have taken courses in university, like I'm still, I'm graduating this quarter. So like I've taken courses in, on data science, but like I was wondering if you have some tips on how to organize uh, data science projects more, uh, uh, like to make them more uh, clean and to have a more systematic approach at structuring data science projects. So if you have some tips or some links to that I can go through. So that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Had, uh, actually, great discussion with the Kaggle team um, right here. We recorded it. And they also emphasized on the importance of having a very good uh, presence on GitHub or, or Kaggle notebooks, making sure you have a, a well structured readme file. And basically, tackling, tackling find an interesting data set or tackling the problem that you find interesting, you know. Uh, so there's a lot of data sets in under Kaggle data sets. Um, or other public data sources. Um, yeah, basically having a strong portfolio really makes you stand out when you're lo either looking for a new role or you're looking for uh, to show off your skills. Um, it really helps. And Rachel, uh, Rachel, Rachel uh, on that link, um, or sorry, on that on that talk, she gave a link to another talk and uh, discussion that she, she does a really good job going through that. Posting just a direct link to that right here. Thank you so much. It sounds, it. it sounds like your question also went to like, like say you start a new project, how to structure it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think this is worth like maybe a deeper dive or like the specific resource to like show some examples. But one format that I've seen um, is to say like organize like the project into different folders. So like put your data in one folder, you put like maybe like some utility functions in another folder, and then you have like a folder of notebooks um, that show off say um, the analysis itself. And then maybe you have a folder for like models that you save. I will say one thing that's pretty important if you say put your project on GitHub is one thing that I'll look at when I look at somebody's GitHub page is just the cleanliness of code. So like, is it easy to read? Like uh, the code is very straightforward. It's well commented. Um, general coding practices um, definitely stand out. If the code is messy, like I guess poor, like poor grammar in the comments, like not like small mistakes. I mean like, like consistent mistakes, then that'll stand out as well. Thank you so much. Hi right, friends. Uh, then in terms of upcoming sessions, again, next week, David, uh, sorry, Dimitri and Alexander will cover for us some more advanced strategies for the highlight game, as well as this new simulation called Hungry Geese. Check it out, that's next week. After that, we're gonna do a combination of happy hour plus one notebook. We haven't done that before. This notebook is about this vaccine tracker that Kaggle released recently as a bonus course on the geospatial uh, mini course. So that is coming up as well. Um, then after that, there was a session recently on end of Feb on TensorFlow, it's called TensorFlow Everywhere. Um, we're highly encouraged to check it out. There's two videos, uh, uh, four hours each that are a bit long, but basically they cover new features in uh, TensorFlow, um, some production best practices uh, on how do you develop, how do you deploy uh, your models on maybe on, on JavaScript or, or edge devices and things like that. So a lot of interesting events going on here. I highly encourage you to check it out and uh, watch the recordings. A lot of great speakers, including Lawrence, which we had the pleasure to interview last year. Um, so check out both events and then we'll, we'll do a summary when we come back here of, you know, what did we think of each topic? What do we find interesting and share notes and comments among us? That's yeah. coming up as hey, well. George, I just I just wanted to point out on um, the March 31st, the happy hour one, there's a um, competing event at this, uh, starts at 6.30 and is scheduled to run through 8.30.
from Statistical Seminars DC on handling data and balance in machine learning. Um, so I don't. Got it. I thought that that would be an interesting one to to look at, but it does compete. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we can tune into that in the beginning, and then we can come here after that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I, I'm trying my best to keep us on a, on a schedule in terms of the same day, same time, so that we can block it on our calendars. But yeah, um, unless there's a very, very important reason. Yeah, otherwise, I think we should just stick with the same day and time. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's, it's only one notebook. You, we can look at it in advance, and we can work on it in advance. But it's not recorded or anything, so it's just a very small get together, I would say. Maybe that explains the number of attendees. <laughs> cool. Uh, last thing, uh, unrelated to tech, I just wanted to pitch in a new community that I started, friends. This is related to like fitness, photography. If you, if that is of interest to you, check it out. I'll post it on the chat. Uh, I'll do some events uh, online, but many of them events will be in person. Um, uh, if this is something of interest to you, check it out. That's the last plugin I'll do. And then, yeah, next week we'll continue our uh, space exploration and simulations and uh, we'll see each other next week. I'll stop sharing. Go ahead. And I'll stop recording here for YouTube and I'll leave the floor open for us to discuss.